Hello, Rob here, and what we're going to do in this video is look at the Assassin's Creed franchise and how Ubisoft explo exploited for transmedia storytelling purposes. And what we're going to be looking at here obviously fits into section B, we're particularly looking at media industries here. The key theory we need to be looking at is the idea of cultural industries by David Hesmogulch. This idea that cultural industry companies try to minimise risk and maximise profits uh, audiences through vertical and horizontal integration by formatting their cultural products through the use of stars, genres and serials or franchises we're going to call it. So what they're going to be doing is they're going to be taking brands that they own, so Assassin's Creed for example, and try to exploit that brand in as many ways as possible across as many different platforms as possible. So within the game itself, obviously, you're going to have multiple entrants into that franchise. You're going to have every year or so a new one's going to be brought out. They're going to bring it out across different platforms like we saw in previous videos. But it's not just about that. It's trying to exploit it in as many ways as you can through synergy. So what happens is that different um, divisions of your conglomerate, the subsidiaries that you own, won't just work together to make the games and stuff like that, distribute them, but they'll try to exploit them in as many ways as they can. So it's about exploiting the brand beyond its original context of being a game in this case. Okay, The idea that the largest company conglomerates now operate across a number of different cultural industries. So it's not just about games for Ubisoft, it's about music, it's about television, it's about film, it's about any other way they can exploit it as well. So this is Jeffrey Sardan, Ubisoft's Chief Sales and Marketing Officer. And what he says is, another thing that's very important for the life cycle is the transmedia offer. All the figurines, the books, the publishing, we have a movie in the next coming year. So it's not about games, we're talking about a global brand. right? So, transmedia. Transmedia obviously means across media. You might want to pause the video, write down the definition. Across media. So, it's not just going to be the games, like I said, it's going to be other platforms too. It's going to be novelizations. It's going to be comic books. So, books and publishing, right? It's about movies, and now they've got a TV show coming in as well. Right? It's about trying to make as much money out of Assassin's Creed as they possibly can. We've previously looked at Disney for things like Black Panther. Well, look at how um, Disney, through their Disney Plus channel, have made shows like WandaVision or uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. These are transmedia products. They are telling the story of these characters across as many platforms as they can. Obviously, they'll be in the comic books. But they're also in the movie franchise and in the spin-off TV shows. Exactly like they've done with Star Wars as well, with shows like um, The Mandalorian, for example. And they are obviously making an Obi-Wan Kenobi show and all these other ones too, okay? It's all about transmedia storytelling. Um, Star Wars are notorious for this in the way that they are constantly um, re... what they call retconning, sort of like totally rewriting the backstory of everything all the time all right so this is an important quote it's worth writing it down it's a good one so i'll pause the video and write it down right next slide so first things first one of the divisions of ubisoft is ubisoft motion pictures so in 2016 they produced assassin's creed the film it was a film with a $125 million budget. That makes it relatively low budget by, you know, Hollywood action movie standards. You know, about half the kind of money you'd expect from a, you know, a Marvel movie. Um, it went on to gross $240.7 million. This would have made it a bit of a disappointment. So it made back, you know, just under twice what it cost to make but you know it probably had uh, 
70 to 100 million dollar advertising budget so it would have just about broken even in the box office um, it will have made some more money um, in you know through the sell through market that is selling DVDs Blu-rays or for video on demand rentals and uh, eventually making its way onto I don't know streaming platforms whatever it's on it on a but it wasn't what you'd call a big hit, despite having Michael Fassbender in it, but it's a big star. Video game adaptations rarely do that well in the cinema, but, you know, it didn't do that bad. So, this is going to link to you know, some culture, isn't it? Different cultural industries. So, it's horizontally integrated because you've got Ubisoft Motion Pictures are making the movie, and then you've got, you know, the different um, the Montreal and Sofia and Milan divisions of Ubisoft making the video game for example so pause the video make a note of that right it's transmedia storytelling because it's adding to the backstory of the video games it's also going to be cross promoting the video games because this is going to potentially reach audiences who don't necessarily play the video games. Fans of Michael Fassbender might go to watch it. Um, you know, the people who want an action movie who aren't, you know, typical gamers but have heard of the Assassin's Creed brand might go and, you know, watch it and maybe that will then lead them to go and play the video game. So it's cost promotion going on. The latest information we've got from October 2020 is that Netflix have announced that they've got this joint venture going on with Ubisoft Motion Pictures to develop Assassin's Creed into a series of um, products for Netflix. And originally they're going to start off with a live action adaptation, whether this relates to the movie whether it's completely independent and you know to what extent it links to the video games we don't know but there's also potential they'll branch out into other areas too like an animated spin-off possibly even a separate anime style animated spin-off as well so as you can see what they're doing with Netflix is going into this joint venture to cross develop products. I mean this is what Marvel used to do with Netflix before they brought out Disney Plus so remember the Marvel shows that they used to have on uh, Netflix like Jessica Jones and um, Iron Fist and uh, all those kind of shows okay Daredevil obviously was the first one so that's what they're doing basically they're using Netflix to be able to reach a much wider larger audience plus Netflix or like Amazon Prime um, are one of the few um, organizations actually making mid-budget movies and stuff nowadays because um, they will take risks that you know, big film companies won't so pause make a note of that Next slide. Not just video, um, there's also an Audible, go, um, Assassin's Creed Gold, Audible original audio drama. Not so much an audio book as such, but a full cast uh, dramatization, um, actually narrated by Riz Ahmed. So again, it's using fans. It's got Anthony Head, who people might remember. Giles from Buffy the Vampire Slayer and um, it is obviously taking that Assassin's Creed story and turning it into a well essentially like a radio play um, so as you can see it's available on audio £17.49 so it's not that cheap so that's another example of transmedia storytelling it's obviously taking you know the characters from the Assassin's Creed game 
and bring it into an entirely new context. So, make a note. Pause the video. Which ties in with this series of books. Uh, you've got the Assassin's Creed series, which are either written by Oliver Bowden or Gordon Doherty. And obviously there's you know, one that sort of like goes with each different period of the games, essentially. Uh, sometimes they're direct spin-offs of the games, obviously building on the stories that are in the video games. So it's transmedia storytelling. It may be, you know, it gives you more background, gives you more context. Maybe it spins off onto other characters, whatever. But it's there again to sort of like, you know, it's another platform. It books this time. Okay. Um, they're not exactly going to be the greatest of books. I mean, we're not talking Dostoevsky here or anything. But if it gets people reading, it can't be a bad thing. So... These are made by Penguin Random House, so, you know, a really big publisher. We'll quite often see these cheap in the works. So, pause, make a note. Then there are the comic books. So they've been writing a, a Assassin's Creed comic book series since 2015. Now... They're made by Titan Comics, who are a pretty big independent comic book company. And I think they were originally written in the French language. So I think they were a French series originally. Um, but I'm sure they've been translated into English. As you can see, they've been going since 2015. The most recent one, as far as I can see, was 2018. Again, transmedia storytelling. Carries on the story of the video games into a different platform. And obviously the kind of people who are going to be playing video games are quite likely to be the kind of people who read comic books. There's going to be a big crossover with those fandoms. So it's an ideal way to bring out more profit. Most better me to memorise all those, just to make a note of the fact they've been doing comic books since 2015 and made by Titan. So it's another um, joint venture. Then of course there's the merchandising, another way you can squeeze money out of this stuff, um, toys essentially, but you know these are not the kinds of, this is an 18 certificate video game, these are not toys for children to play with, they're collectibles essentially, um, so yeah you've got action figures, most of which will probably be never taken out of their bubble wrap because it will, do, uh, it will ruin their value. The bubble wrap, is it called? Bubble pack, sorry. You've got statues, this strangely armless uh, Evelyn character. I was trying to look like Venus of Milo or something. Um, again, statuettes, Funko Pops, um, you know, T-shirts, cosplay outfits, you know, an Assassin's Creed 3 double bedspread. Let that sink in for a minute. Assassin's Creed wine for some reason again more statuettes, more t-shirts and of course you're going to be you know, trying to get Assassin's Creed into as many like magazines that deal with video games as possible maybe go so far as to pay for a good review um, there's a lot of debate as to how far you can trust the reviews in some of these magazines Often they're quite they're paid for, I'm not bespeeching PlayStation official magazines, besmirching. I mean, good name, but you never know. Taking a pinch of salt, is what I'm saying. So again, this is another way in which you can squeeze money out of these things. They're the kind of things you're going to find on sale in Forbidden Planet, where you go in to buy your, you know, you'll go and you'll buy your comic books and you'll buy the, the merch. You go into HMV, you buy the video game, you can buy the movie, you can buy the merch. All right? So it's another way of squeezing as much profit out of Assassin's Creed as possible. Because you're selling the brand name. It's not just a game, it exists beyond its core original context. All right? 
maximize risk, minimize profit by selling as much stuff as you can in as many different ways as you can to as many people as you can. And there are a lot of super fans out there who will buy this stuff. Pause. Make a note of some of the things you can buy. Why not do a bit of a Google search, find out as much Assassin's Creed 3 merch as you can, and just go and look and see how much some of this tag costs. So, that's that. Um, any questions, you know where I am. These PowerPoints will be available in the OneDrive, and I will see you in the next one.